Okay, um, let's start the lesson, okay? So in today's class, what we will do is we'll have a quick review of what we have done in the last class about uh, mutations. Uh, we did discuss about um, oligo, uh, many, many, a, a few things, such as uh, doped oligonucleotide cassette metagenesis, one of my favorites because of the, uh, in terms of logic. And uh, once we, after review, we will finish off some of There are uh, two or three. After that, we will do an exercise about designing primers. So uh, you, I hope you will have your paper or notes with you so that you can solve it and tell me the uh, primers quickly, OK? And I will be mute. You are supposed to discuss and present and so on. Let's check this out. Uh, <clears throat> So we we also discussed about uh, mutagenesis. In that sense, we also described uh, what is the significance of single-stranded vectors, right? Uh, in mutagenesis, especially the site-directed mutagenesis, uh, single-stranded vectors become very uh, useful to us. Uh, with those kinds of vectors, we can do multiple point mutations. We can do insertions. We can do deletions. So if I were to ask you a question in your uh, uh, in reality, I would have asked you to design a primer such that it would either have point mutations, insertions, or deletions. Of course, you will be given a sequence for the uh, of the uh, vector or the template in this case. <coughs> so. Today's class, it, it could be uh, only three protocols, so you should be able to understand clearly. At the uh, once we finish this, I hope you will be able to design the primers. The objective is that so when you are listening to this class, try to pay attention to it. Everything that we are learning is accumulative, in the sense that we know how to design primers previously. We have learned this, and we would want that it becomes. Uh, we would want that you be able to design primers as per the needs. Today's needs is for site-directed mutagenesis. So you should be able to expand your skills in primer designing for that. I am proud of you people that uh, majority of you were able to design uh, primers in general, cloning primers as well. You were able to defend them well. And uh, from the videos, that is what I got. And uh, I hope you will be able to make it up uh, today as well. So I will um, I will skip this part. So I'm going to go a little bit, uh, kind of, uh, not too detailed. If I give, if I'm detailed, um, if I'm trying to be spoon feeding, then I'm actually uh, crubbing your skills. Okay. Rather, I am going to describe you some things. And based on that, you should be able to make it up. I'm not going to discuss this part. Uh, let's, I'm not, this is, uh, leave that, forget about it, OK? So all, when you are designing primers, you will, uh, I hope you will be able to remember that you, you are always designing primers such a way that, that it is going to go from five prime to three prime because it should be converging the primers should be converging like this right only then it is pcr based otherwise it is not there are three different methods one of it is uh, let's see if it is there primer extension method if i if i haven't discussed that that is simple right your three objectives will be there uh, or sometimes you will have to make a, say if this is a sequence, and you have to make some point mutation in here or in this location. It is quite simple because you will just incorporate a primer with the mutation in it and then just amplify it so that when you have the amplicon or the it is produced, um, the every new strand that is produced will have the 
mutation in it and then you can clone it off okay that is called as um, simply as primer extension method okay uh, there is nothing to discuss about it all you know you need to know is how to design the primer how to incorporate you should have had prior knowledge about what you are based on the object you you should have one should have known what do i want to change in it and then change that part of, of it so uh, primer designing uh, sorry primer extension method does not have a big deal to explain but if I want to make a um, mutation in the middle of the gene, OK, in, in somewhere here, I want to make a gene. You cannot have a primer built so much to incorporate the mutation. That's uh, not going to happen. There are methods to synthesize uh, genes uh, as long as, say, maybe 100 or so bases. That is also too much, actually. 50 bases or 75 bases is fine. After that, the error rate increases. Even chemical synthesis has an error rate. Uh, so it is not so encouraging to use chemical synthesis for uh, designing, for synthesizing a gene of more than, say, 100 base pairs. It's difficult. S for example, if you are having a gene with the start codon here, and uh, this is a stop codon, and you have say for example some 400 base pairs the length of the gene is 400 base pairs we cannot synthesize that right if and especially if you want to make a mutation in the middle of it you want to change say one or two codons in the middle how can you do that that is where pcr method uh, for site directed mutagenesis becomes very useful and that is what we are going to discuss in the last class, when I was taking this, I did discuss about the strategies people say. I call them with raw uh, names like beating the bushes. That is something like random mutagenesis. You create variations and then select uh, the one that is best suited to your requirements. The other one is you have a target, you shoot at it, nothing else. But for that to happen, one should have had a lot of prior knowledge about what to change, which codon to change, to from which codon to which codon we should change. We should have a lot of knowledge about that. So this is, uh, I think, the one that is representing here is the um, primer extension method. I will leave that there. And I'm going to discuss about mutation. Uh, sorry, site-directed mutagenesis. For this, we should all, anytime we are trying to uh, perform, uh, anytime we are trying to do an experiment or study a protocol, it's important to know the objectives of it. Only then we are able to follow it through the way it should. So the in this protocol, it is a two-step PCR method. In the sense, you have, it is a long gene, say 500 base pairs, that's long enough. And you want to create a mutation in the center of it. You cannot use primer extension method, so you have to do something else now. Because at the end, we want to have the whole gene with the desired mutation in the middle of it. OK? So here is a protocol. It is two-step PCR method. Uh, in this case, we need uh, several primers. We need primer A. And we also need, we need four primers in this case, primer A and primer A prime. OK, I hope you notice that. And there is also another primer, primer B and A primer C. There are four primers. So in this set, you are doing A plus B. In this PCR react, you are doing A prime plus B. OK, so you perform. You take a template, uh, say, for example, like this. The whole thing is here. And uh, you perform a PCR using primer A. I'll put this as A and primer B, right? So you will get a product something like this. It is half the product, right? From this A and B, 
you will get this if i were to use a prime and b prime that is different a prime is a little bit different from that of a a prime is on the complementary strand with the same mutation okay a prime is something like this and this would have been the c prime c primer c and once you have finished it you would generate uh, a a a fragment something like this okay so here is that is the same thing depicted little differently probably but otherwise the intended meaning is same so if i put uh, 5 prime to 3 prime 5 and 3 um, this should be 5 prime base pairing here so it will go this way and this one will synthesize in this direction right so you'll get this plot but if i have to say this for here and for the other fragment you need to have this one will um, gener synthesize polymerize in that direction and this one in direction so you will have a, a fragment like this the interesting thing happens this way so you have generated with a plus b primers you generated this fragment and with a prime plus b you have generated this fragment now you take the pcr products mix them up and denature when you denature these two strands will separate so do these two strands and then let them anneal so you'll have two different pro types of products that will form because of that one is uh, this the tops one that i put a tick mark five prime uh, a strand that is formed like this this way and the second one is this one I will situation, I will call this as product X and product Y. Which one do you think will be, uh, if I add DNA polymerase and DNTPs, everything else, which one do you think will have some uh, expansion? Uh, you should also remember that this half here or this half here are individually not my objective. I want a full length DNA fragment like this with the uh, intended mutation. This is a half and this one is another half. I need to combine and make it a full length gene. So for that, what we can do is uh, when we mix and uh, re -anneal, we have something that will happen is called as, uh, uh, sorry, you have two different products, X and Y. DNA polymerase does nothing to this. This is a five prime end. And it cannot do anything here because there is no template here. Remember, DNA po majority of the polymerases that are involved in replication are template dependent DNA polymerases. So this, the fragment or the combination X will not give rise to, no, will not give rise to any product. Okay. But if you see the later one, the, that is the product Y, here is 3 prime OH and there is a template. So this part will be synthesized. And in this case, this part will be synthesized. So now you have a complete uh, gene set. This is exactly what this is. And once you have polymerized that, you can add further polymerization, uh, DNA polymerase, you can amplify that. Uh, further by adding DNA polymerase and add and primer B and C. I hope you remember primer B and C are somewhere from here and here. So you'll get uh, multiple, comp you'll amplify the copies of the uh, intended gene. So what you should know is primer A and primer B. For the designing of the primers, you should pay attention to where you are making the uh, mutation I will just I will not go into depth of it but uh, I'll just give you uh, some sequence say for example this is the sequence and I I need to make a mutation in one of the uh, say I need to make a mutation here I want instead of T I want a G so what do I do I need to make um, Primer B 
and primer C is not an issue. How the designing of primer A and A prime is the point. So in this case, if I have to design a primer, so it will be, say, if I have to say, there will be some homology sequence that is complementary to this. And this would be here, I should have added, uh, so G, A, T, I, I, here the original sequence is T, but I have to change it to C, right? So I need to put G in here and C and A. The rest of the sequence is matching, except there is only one sequence that is uh, not matching with the original. I am incorporating the mutation here like this. So the similarly on the top strand, if I wanted to do that, I should have had C, T, and here I want I want G here, so I should have had C here, and G T. So this is the mutation that I have is incorporated within the uh, sequence, like this. So I will um, something like this, right? This will be the five prime, and this is three prime. This will be the five prime, and this is the three prime. When I have, then you should also figure out um, the sequences for primer B and primer C. And you should know which primer should be used in combination, which of uh, either B or C. So I will repeat this uh, in the sense of you when you're going to decide the primer. So first thing is you should know where to incorporate uh, the mutation. Second thing is, which combinations of primers should I use? OK, keep that in mind. And then we can, uh, when you do the exercise, you will understand. The second one is called as mega primer method. It is called a mega primer because of a reason that we use a, a whole PCR product as a primer. That's why it is called as mega primer method. And in this case, we just need uh, we need three primers, not not need of four primers. So what we'll do here is uh, using uh, the uh, objectives are similar to that of the previous one, where we want a mutation in the middle of the gene, middle of a large gene. Then how would you do that? So here is one primer that is synthesized and uh, that we'll call it as primer A, for example. And then uh, we will synthesize one strand based on that. And then use a different primer. I will call this as primer B. And then it will synthesize this second strand of it. So you will, after multiple rounds of PCR, you, one will have a product which is having which would have incorporated the mutation. In this case, the mutation is incorporated only in one of the primers. Here, as, a, as per the names, it is primer A. And the next one, what, we, what, did, what is done is that you take the whole, uh, the original DNA that is there as a template. This would have been the template. And you use this whole PCR product that is formed here as a primer. And you perform PCR. OK? And uh, it is like you, you uh, after that, um, you, it will synthesize the, the full length of the gene. And then you use another primer here. That would be primer C. OK? In mega primer method, there are three primers. Primer A, as indicated in this, uh, in here, is the one that is going to have, um, is the one that is going to have the mutation here. We use that and generate a, a, a fragment, uh, and then we also use Primer B to have multiple rounds of PCR to get a product, of which in which the product uh, has incorporated the mutation. Then we use this whole PCR product as a primer. It's a huge primer, right? And that's why it is called as mega primer, and the method, name of the method comes from there. We use the whole PCR product as a mega primer, 
and the template will be full length of the uh, DNA or the gene that we want to amplify. And then we will perform PCR. And we are going to, we are also supposed to use a different PCR to synthesize the second strand of it. And that is how we can get a, a gene uh, with the intended mutation in it. Okay. So far, uh, we have learned uh, in, in today's class, we have learned two step PCR method. And we have also learned the mega primer method. And prior to that, uh, primer extension, we have discussed a little bit of it. There is another um, uh, nice technique which I used some time ago. Um, I would rather go into that one. It is called as uh, this is the better picture of the same thing. We used to have something called as quick change method. I think that is a brand trade name or so. Quick change method. It is nice and smart too. So what they do in that is you have a primer, or sorry, a plasmid. And into the plasmid, you have already cloned your gene of interest. The plasmid should be small. OK? And you one will have to have incorporate the primer. Uh, you have to use primers in which the intended uh, mutations are there, like this. Here is a mutation. That is in this picture here. This is a mutation, and this one is another mutation. You are using the whole plasmid as a template, and you are producing more number of uh, plasmids. Now, what will happen if you have, if I have used these two as primers, as indicated here? If I use these two as primers, and then it produces a product, you will have. One is the original strand. Uh, you, you will have two different products. Uh, oh, sorry, one product. This is the amplified one, right? And this is the original template that you have taken, the whole thing. So if I transform these, this, uh, after the PCRs, if I transform it, this one will give a colonies, and this one can also give colonies. But this is wild type. I don't want that. These are the mutants, and I want colonies of this. How can I get those? So one is one of the ways is to use, um, say, this plasmid, the original that is used as a template, has been obtained from normal E. coli. So what would be there? The difference between newly synthesized uh, plasmid in the PCR reaction and the plasmid that has been obtained from E. coli have two different things. One of it is methylated. This one is the original template one. Uh, original plasmid is methylated because you have taken it from, say, normal E. coli. Whereas the, uh, the newly synthesized one is purely you use DNTPs. So it does not have any kind of methylation on it. <coughs> As we discussed uh, previously, in uh, in terms of uh, uh, methylation sensitivity we discussed about that restriction endonucleases some of them are methylation sensitive some of them are insensitive and some of them are methylation dependent in fact we have discussed about one enzyme called as dpn1 if there is dpn1 if you add dpn1 it will cleave any dna that is with methylated whether it is fully methylated or hemimethylated, it doesn't matter. It will only cleave that is methylated. And when you add DPN1, the, the template uh, plasmid that we have used gets degraded because it is the only one that is methylated. And the newly synthesized ones are not methylated. So they are spared from DPN1 cleavage. And when you transform, you will only get colonies that are representative of the mutated uh, mutated plasmid. I mean, the plasmid with the intended mutation. And we, we, do, we got rid of it. Um, it, is, it takes just one day to perform these things, in the sense you perform PCR, add, treat it with DPN1, and then transform it. The next day, you have colonies with the mutations. It's a very fantastic uh, uh, method. 
we, we will call it as quick change method. Um, just we'll follow the uh, what the um, trademark is. OK, and there is one more thing I need to mention is we need to use uh, high fidelity DNA polymerase, something like PFU. So it is a small PFU is very uh, accurate and it's also slow. And was a, when I was mentioning that the plasmid that we chose should be small so that we can reduce the number of mutations, even then, even if it is high fidelity, still it does make mistakes. Or actually, um, it, it is something like this. I will put it, uh, I will write it. So PFU, if you are using, OK, it, it requires something like per KB, it requires one minute of extension. Uh, tag DNA polymerase does it much faster, but it does make mistakes. And if, if I take a plasmid, uh, sorry, a plasmid template of 5 KB, that means I should use uh, five minutes per every extension. And imagine 30 extensions and 13 to five, right? It's going to 150 minutes just for the extension. And then we also have other, psych other steps in the reaction. And each round of um, cycles, you will have decreasing amount of PFU or any of the polymerases, OK? So for that reason, it is better to use as small as possible. You should not, 5 KB is still all right. Imagine if it were 10 KB, what would you do then? If it is 10 KB, then it goes uh, even uh, 10 into, sorry, why did I do it? Um, yeah, 10 into 10 into five. That will be like uh, 500 minutes or so. That's a huge um, PCR cycle, right? PCR. Uh, whole program, it will take a lot of time. So those are some of the things that you need to uh, discuss. Uh, why are we doing mutagenesis? Is uh, First thing is, for research purpose, if you want to determine the active sites, which ones are not, people try to change the charged amino acids with uh, alanine or so to see if the function of the uh, enzyme is altered or not. That is one of the important uh, things because once you identify, once you one identifies uh, the active amino acids involved in active sites, then they can play around a little more uh, to do uh, further analysis or manipulate the enzyme for the needs. You can one can also design novel uh, proteins in vaccine and for drug discovery as well. So I'll stop here and uh, I'm going to display the question. I hope you are all ready with the question paper with an answer paper and uh, this. I want you to this is one uh, design primers. This is by primer extension method. And the second one is by two-step primer method. So you're supposed to answer now, and uh, probably you can upload it, OK? Once you're done, please let me know the, with the sequences. Then you can have further discussions on that. So I think I have to describe a mutation here, right? I want to describe, uh, sorry, A should be replaced with G. And in this case, um, C and T should be replaced with A and G. So in the first one, you will have to design two primers. 
And in the two-step PCR method, you are supposed to design four primers.
Has anyone finished it? If you are, please, uh, I would activate. You, you, you will be allowed to present your screen if you are on computer. Can you please do that? Is anyone done? Please message if you are. OK, we'll do something like this. Uh, all of you are supposed to take a print screen of it, um, and then you can post it. Take a picture of it, and I would want that you have you post your uh, answers in the WhatsApp group now. Solve it on the paper, and um, and you can post it on the WhatsApp group. Do that. And if there are any questions, please do ask now so that I'll be able to, to answer them.
has anyone solved it yet?
Has anyone done yet or nobody? Uh, can anyone try to answer, please? Uh, last three minutes. What should be the sequences of this uh, of these? Okay, I, I was expecting G in this position, so I have to use the primer would be C C T. I was expecting a G here, so I should use something like, uh, oh, sorry, one second. So I should use, this is what I'm expecting here, so it would be a C here. So it would, should be G, G, A, G, A, T. That should be one primer, five prime to three prime. This is the primer extension method. So the other one would be T A C G uh, T G. This would be five prime. So this primer will synthesize this way, and this primer will synthesize in this direction. So that's the easier one. Um, I will also write here what I'm expecting. In this location, I'm expecting A, and in this position, G. So the primers, uh, I will only write for the uh, ones that incorporate the uh, mutation. So one of it would be G, sorry, G, T. Uh, so one second, I have to also mention what is expected here, C and um, sorry. It is T is expected here and C is expected here. Upon mutation, that is what is the uh, sequence that is um, that is expected. So it should be G T um, T C T G. So if I'm using this, this would be the five prime of it, three prime. So I should have another primer which is this C A C. T G, that would be the five prime and three prime. I would call this as primer A, or um, I will call this as primer um, A, and this one as B. So A and B would give me the product of from here till here. And for primer, uh, for the other primer, that is A prime, I should have had. C A T sorry C A G A A C so this would be the five prime and this is the three prime and the other primer should be like this so I'll call this as primer B uh, sorry um, primer A prime I hope you remember right in the in the protocol that we have discussed it is called as A prime, and this will be the primer C. So A plus B is one, and A prime plus C is another one. Those are the two PCR reactions one has to carry out and then mix the products and then perform further polymerization, and then do uh, another final round of PCR with B and C to get the full length, multiple copies of the full length, okay? I'll stop here, and if you are done, uh, if your answer is uh, something like this, then you're correct. If you, if I have made a mistake, you can always discuss with me about it. Okay? We'll see more details in the uh, next next lesson. Take care, and uh, have fun. Bye, everyone.
Thank you all. Thank you.